Hello and welcome to Lightways at Life Astrologer with me, Anna Isabel, a psychological astrologer, and I'm delighted to have Penny Thornton back. Hello, Penny. Hi, Anna. I'm delighted to be back. It's, um, I've been doing a little series um, on relationships just um, ahead of the seminar at the Astrology Lodge on the 9th of April, which is on relationships. And you are doing a talk on synastry. So I guess maybe for those who are newer to astrology, it might be nice to begin with uh, a, a definition, I guess, of what the synastry is. Well, syn synastry is a Greek word, a Greek combination for syn, which means together and astra, which is star. So it's together stars. And we have words in the English language like synergy when we do things together. So it's together astrology, really. That's what it means. It's an absolutely vast aspect of astrology because doing a natal chart is enough. I mean, that can take you hours. But then you're looking at two people and you're looking at their relationship dynamics. And it is complicated, but um, you may know that what one of my bylines is keep it simple. So I try to reduce everything to a series of steps so that the steps will keep you on target with your analysis of how this couple, you know, relate to each other. Um, otherwise, you will get lost. You will get lost in thinking, oh, gosh, well, Saturn is on her son and yet you know, there's Jupiter on that Mars. Oh, what do I do with that? Now I'm confused. So um, it's, it is a complicated subject, but it, I would say it can be made easy. It can be made manageable. And um, I'm giving the first talk on Saturday and it's called the building block. So I'm trying to do that in stages that you're going to need to be able to look at how do I build this relationship that I'm looking at? And one of the things that I think is very, very important is the element and modality balance that will give you the dynamics of the relationship without even getting very deeply into all the connections between the charts. And, um, you know, so the thing is that in as much as we are our element, <laughs> you know, these as kind of vital uh, forces, for want of a better word. Um, you've got two sets of vital forces <laughs> coming together and they make a whole because even though we are individuals, if you want to look at that astrologically, we've got our own natal chart, we've got our own history and our background. But when we come together, we become one. And I think we can understand that more when we think back about our relationship history and how we, in our different relationships, are different people. So it's the dynamics of the relationship, the connection with the other person that brings different things out in you and then makes the relationship what it is. And of course, there are, you know, one of the ways I look at it too in the early stages is looking at the element balance and the modality balance so you've got that essential dynamic going in the relationship is that um it, there's also the idea of the cardinals the mutables and the fix being families and if you think of them as families it explains absolutely why you have the cancerians with the Aries you have the Scorpios with the Leos. In other words, what people are often very drawn to is that sense of belonging to the same modality. So you feel, oh, I'm with, I'm with family. And of course, we don't always like our families. We don't always get on with them. But there is an essential sense of belonging. And that's one of the things that I noted first, you know, early on in my career as an astrologer when I wrote my first book, Sinistry, uh, was that in my 
consulting room would come all these apparently mismatched couples. Yes, here were all the Taurians with the Aquarians and, you know, the Capricorns with the, uh, with the Librans. And I was thinking, there's something going on here. Now, what is it? What is it that makes these two feel they fit together? And so uh, that was really the beginning of the understanding about how it's a family, your modality, when you start looking at that in relationships, it's your family. So um, that was something else I was going to say, because I thought about this last night. Um, and of course, it's very tempting to do this in astrology and as an astrologer, as an expert, you know, and you make a judgment on two people's charts and you say, oh, this is never going to work. You know, look at this, look at that, look at the other. And yet here are a couple who are still together 40 years later, and they've got all these mismatched things in the chart. So there is always something outside the astrology, and you absolutely have to give that full value. The spark, we might call it, that chemistry, the, the, the chemical element, but there's something extra that we can't see. We can sort of maybe trace a line to it but we can't actually spot it and what <laughs> really brought this to mind um last night was that i found myself my partner and i ended up watching um australian uh married at first sight so this program as you know is built on the idea that all these amazing experts you know psychologists you name it color therapy i don't know who they all are but they're all massively expert in their field have managed to put these two people together based entirely on various kind of systems which say these are really, really well-matched people. They're a great couple. And here I saw on the sofa were people who really actually didn't even like each other. You know, forget, now they were married, are they going to stay married? I mean, are they going to be able to talk to each other? So that is a very important component of uh, synastry and I think you have to come to uh, synastry and examining two charts and making judgments about two charts with a degree of humility that you can see the dialogue you may be able to see the dynamics you may be able to see the pressures on them at the time or the influences that are there at the time that maybe have brought them together but there is a whole realm of stuff that's out there that you will not be able to entirely get. <laughs> well, no, it's this is um, it. it I, I've been smiling as I've been listening to you because the number of times I've had this conversation where with people where they say, oh, but, you know, you know, it's he's you know, he's a Leo and I'm an Aquarius and. And I. And it's just, if only life were that simple, it isn't that simple because in order to understand why it is that you might be attracted to somebody in the same modality as you, who is a square or an opposition to you without even considering the rest of the chart, like the nodes and karmic lessons, etc. We have to consider the the fact, the very simple fact that we often are seeing in someone an aspect of ourselves which we feel is lacking and would like to have. It's very unconscious. We're not aware of it. But it may well be that if you're an Aquarius and you're looking at a Leo, well, you, you you like that passion and maybe you feel like you're too cerebral or too cool and what you like is that heat and or you would like to have that heat it's all the principles of the seventh house isn't it well i think it's really the principles of the elements um and one of the systems that i have which is breaking it down numerically so you end up with um what is the dynamic here? Does uh, person A have no water and person B is full of water? And you see then the attraction for that element you don't have. And 
and all the qualities that we associate with that element. So I think it's very easy to see that. And I have three couples that I'm going to be talking about on my, uh, in my talk that really epitomize that. You know, just very simply looking at elements, you know, don't go very further because, you know, really also like looking at the houses and getting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into each layer of meaning for a house. You can do this with sinistry as well. You know, let's look at the top layer, the most identifiable thing that you'll see with couples, with individuals, it's their element modality, they ooze it. So that will both explain a supply demand mechanism that works in relationships, and also the idea that they're vibrating in some way, I hate to use that word vibrating, they're operating um, at some level you know, on the, in the same way because they share that similar modality. And I don't want to get into all the details now, but it's a very simple um, way of seeing instantly what this relationship is about, at least on the surface. But when you think about, again, the elements, the idea they're vital forces, it's really quite an elemental level. I mean, it's, it's the nearest you're going to get to chemistry, the nearest you're going to get for something like that. Exactly. And, you know, there are times when I've, I've, had, I've had a number of couples like you who on, you know, at first glance on paper, people would say, oh, no, never. And yet they have fabulous relationships and and I, I I can remember you know doing seeing a few couples and uh, just before they were married and they were wanting to they were approaching it very much as how can we help each other Perfect. and and that is perfect because then we could see we could talk about what the differences were and help help each to understand the other so that those differences didn't become the you know um those irritating things that get in the way in time so that you can understand okay well actually this person's not intentionally winding me up this is the way they they think they operate and perhaps you know there's some adjustment and they could do that for each other and that is fantastic because that's exactly the purpose of synastry. That is absolutely the purpose of synastry. And it should be an automatic, you know, that couples decide, you know, I think we're going to take this step. We're going to move in together. Or probably as we move in together rather than as we get married, um, that they take a kind of health check, you know, a wellness check with a good astrologer who can see the pitfalls and the dynamics and what they're moving into you know so they've got a picture really of what it all looks like and you know it's 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 also like putting in the infrastructures of your relationship and if you do that in the earliest stages you're going you're you're going to be a healthy couple because in a lot of relationships people don't do that to begin with and they think oh I'll put up with that that's mildly irritating, but I'll deal with it. Or I won't say what I really want, especially sexually. You know, oh, I don't really like that, but I'm frightened to say it. But what I do like is this, but I'm not going to say it. And, you know, then that becomes a real problem later on because suddenly you introduce something two or three years into the relationship and say, by the way, I don't like the way you do this. Or, by the way, that's really upsetting me. And it's like, well, what the hell happened here? <laughs> You've been perfectly all right for three years. Why is it not right now? So the astrology, of course, again, is you objectify the relationship. And people see it. I remember, I shouldn't be, you know, trading off names, but I do remember the thing that Princess Diana said to me but the first time I saw her. And I had all these charts spread out on, on the table in front of us. And she said, oh, this is amazing. I can sort of see it all here and I'm not in it. <laughs> and I thought, well, that was very true because then you become an observer of your own behavior, for want of a better word, or your own impulses, your own drives, your own needs, your own wishes. And 
so astrology is a super help and it should be given a lot more credence than sadly it is you know what I love is seeing that moment of understanding on a person's face where they say oh that's why that's why they behave in this way or that's why I don't seem to be able to get through we've got a different way of com and communicating and of course we're, we've been talking about romantic relationships but this works all the way through you know when I do workshops you know that where people are looking at the family dynamics and uh, you know it's just it's a beautiful thing and I love that moment because that's the moment at which there's just a chance that friction can be healed yeah and it's it, well awareness is everything you know you put on the light and suddenly oh i can see the room you know so if you can see something i'm not going to say you can avoid it but at least you know where it is and you know what and it you looks can work like. with it you yeah. know the thing is that sometimes when we're busy relating to somebody else we're we're very aware of how we feel we're not necessarily as aware of how the other person feels. And I hear this time and again, where people are, whether it's my students or clients or people you know, attending workshops, where for the first time, perhaps, they've stepped outside of their feelings and, and their view, and they're seeing it through somebody else's eyes, potentially. And that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> yes, it, it definitely is. And, um, I was going to say something a little earlier on about this idea that it should be, you should go for your health check before you decide to embark on this great journey together. But I think so often, and certainly in my case, might not be the same with you, because I think you have a, a different way of practicing in a way. And um, unfortunately, I'm always approached by one person. Very, very occasionally, I get two people in the room at the same time. And that makes a huge difference. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. But, um, you know, it's always one person reaching out to me saying, I'm worried about the relationship with it doesn't working. I think maybe I, you know, maybe we're not growing in the same direction. The thing is, without the other person there, and also it's a little bit late. I mean, it, you know, you needed to get all this sort of, you know, sorted out really a little bit you know, before you've entered this, you know, hole that you happen to find yourself in. Mm -hmm. And two things that remind me of this is that I was dealing with one client. And this client was going through a really, really very difficult time at work. And her partner was also going through a very, very difficult time at work. So the two of them independently were having trouble outside the home. And they're a lovely couple, they've been married, oh, I don't know, 15, 16 years. They had two great kids. Um, so anyway, I saw both of them individually and you know, went through, but at a certain point I said, you know what, why don't you two come into the room together? And because I realized that they were gonna break up if they didn't sort this out. And I remember saying to them, now, from now on, this point on, in regards to everything that's going on in your outer world, remember, you are Team Jones. You are a pair in a team. And if you work together as a team, you will plow through this. And it was something that stuck with them. And they're still my clients. And they still talk about that day when I said to them, you know, the name wasn't Jones, it was something else. But I said, come on, come on, come on. Your team Jones here. Come, get, get on with it. Pull together. Stop pulling each other apart. You know, so it was important. And the other thing that came to mind when you were talking was the idea also that because when we look at the synastry and we look at couples who come together, very often they have degree areas that are the same. And of course, that means if you've got a Pluto transit on that degree, wow, you've got no balancing act at all, because both of you are going through a bit like my Jones couple I was talking about, are both independently going through an absolutely rough period, and that impacts on the relationship, or you've got things happening in the relationship, which require a lot of dealing with. So, 
Yes, it, I just it's so true. Those those stresses, you know, when when transits are happening simultaneously to 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 a couple, they're incredibly stressful because they would they're not they're depleted and not as able to give each other the support that they would otherwise have because they're bo they're both under siege if you like yes, so very difficult. and and the and when i see that like you i say well you know what um it might be time to see the two of you and mm -hmm. and i think that it's so so valuable when i have both there are times when i have one person and and i can see what's happening and i can say okay do you know what this conversation it needs to happen and they go off and and i say and if you if you need you know to to you know come together that's fine that's great we can do that we can and then happily they don't need to come together because they had the conversation and it's and it's fine it's been sorted out but it just it is the beautiful thing about astrology is no matter what we're doing with it it's illuminating oh absolutely and it just clears away that fog of emotion that we are all in mm. um so it's so synastry is well just about everything in life is to do with relationships so it's Love fundamental the most important thing in life and if you haven't got it you're always looking for it <laughs> and if you've got it you're always complaining about it well not necessarily um and, and that's also i think an age thing as well um i think um the older you get uh, the more kind of accepting you are of the fact that relationships are difficult and that, it, you know, you have to work at it. It's not a God given, you know, just because it started so well and everything seemed all right at the beginning, you still got to work at it because that's the journey of the relationship. And it's not, you know, straight down the highway to your destination. No, <laughs> you're going off piste sometimes, you know. <laughs> yes indeed and um it was interesting how you were talking about you know two people becoming one because of course that's the title of my talk on composite <laughs> when you become one mm. and and it's um and it is that because we like to think of ourselves solely as individuals and we are but when when we're a couple we are as you said a team it's a unit and it's how that unit functions as well. And I think, you know, that's really important or it's, it's looking at you, if you've got a business partner, again, you're a unit, that's how you operate. It ceases to be about you alone. You know, we're back to the seventh house again, you know, there's me and you, it's no longer just me, it's us and how do we operate as us um so this is um obviously a topic which is endless and uh, we could talk about it for hours <laughs> we, we so certainly could <laughs> but i think what's your way of saying goodbye Anna? well no what i was going to say is um i think that this is potentially a um a good point at which to remind everyone <laughs> <laughs> that there are hours uh, to come uh, about um, about this subject and mm -hmm. um, relationships in general at the seminar. So I think that um, I would warmly invite people to join us on the 9th of April on Zoom so that we can we can all share um the experience that we have and help everyone else uh through that yeah that's <laughs> yes agreed <laughs> so i guess at this point penny um yes i i would like to say thank you very much for your <laughs> time today and um if people wanted to uh find you penny how do they do that well they can just go to gur gurgle oh that's a new thing but preferably Google, go to Google and just uh, type in Penny Thornton and that will just take you anywhere you want. Take me to take them to my website, it, it's everything. And it should come up right away. I hope if it doesn't, I'll be disappointed. <laughs> 
Well, I, I will put a link to the Astrology Lodge and the seminar on the, on the um, uh, notes to accompany the, this um, interview. And I will also find your website and put a link yeah, on w, www.astrolutely.com. Yes. And, <laughs> and a we good can, place to begin. And then that's a, an easy way for everyone to find you. Penny, thank you so much. Okay, it's my pleasure. See you on Saturday. The ninth. Indeed, on the ninth. And thank you all for watching. Uh, now, next time, we're going to be talking about story, ritual, and sacred astrology. So until then, if you want to learn more about astrology, of course, you can always contact me on through my website, and or I'm sure you could find Penny. Till next time, goodbye. <laughs>